Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. Just a few short months ago, I did this video, before it's too late, clone your Pi Star micro SD card so that our hotspots always have a backup if our SD card crashes. You would have been amazed if you saw some of the comments that came onto the YouTube channel or on my Facebook post. In the YouTube channel, I had to delete them because people were thanking me for showing them how to clone credit cards. I don't think my video had anything to do with that, friend. And on Facebook, where I post to let people know what videos I've put out there, and I post on relevant groups for the topic of the video, a lot of people just came back with, why would you waste an SD card for that, as though these things are made out of gold? Do you realize you can buy this SanDisk Ultra 16 gigabyte drive card on Amazon for less than $10? When your Pi Star crashes because of your SD card, it's nice to have a backup. And to me, it's not too extravagant to spend $10 to do so. I haven't done much with my hotspot or DMR over the last several weeks because I've been doing a mini series on QRP rigs and pairing them with a 100 watt amplifier tuner, the XPA125B from Jaigu. And I was showing a use case where it would make sense to have that QRP rig and the XPA125B for a shack at 100 watts or to go portable with that QRP rig anytime you wanted to go POTA lightweight, or to take it with you when you traveled in the event you needed more watts when you needed some extra punch and five or 10 weren't going to get it done. Coming back to DMR and my Bridgecom SkyBridge hotspot, this is what I came across recently when I powered them both up. Nothing, nothing. When I powered on the Bridgecom hotspot, I saw on the screen what I expected when I powered on my AnyTone, I got on the screen what I expected. I am red in DMR status and I cannot connect to a talk group. So I began my troubleshooting process. Next, I logged into my PyStar dashboard. I went into configuration to see if something showed up weird. And as I started to scroll down, I just recognized things that seemed strange to me. The first thing I saw was this time zone. I don't live anywhere near the time zone of Africa that I'm aware of. And as I scrolled down further, I did not understand why I have a European Brandmeister gateway. And then I saw information here that I hadn't seen before, like there was new data that had been added and wasn't there previously. Now, fortunately, I had kept a copy of my original configuration just in PDF screen. So I started to compare the two. So this is the PDF that I kept. Let's go back to general config. I'm actually in my, this is my dashboard right now live. This is the original config that I copied to PDF. All right, in general config. All right, so somehow my timing got changed. Should be UTC. Don't know how that got changed. So let's go ahead and move that back to UTC. There's no way that that's, you know, causing my Pi Star not to work, I don't believe. All right, European Brandmeister Gateway. Uh, why? Why? Let's see, I was in uh, Brandmeister United States 3101. I think there have been some recent changes in Brandmeister, but let's find something here in the US. I have no idea whether I should go two, three, four. I don't think it is going to kill me to choose any of them right now and try. Now, right here, starting with this DMR plus IPSC2 Australia, that's, that's new information. In this configuration that I took the snapshot on several months ago, that information didn't even exist. Now it's there. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this. I'm sure, you know, the really smart people watching this video or who are intelligent enough to actually code this stuff, know what to do every time they see these things. For us average people, we come in here and we play with it. Right, here's a US MN2. I have no idea what these are. I have no idea why this information appears now and it didn't previously. If you know, because you're more familiar with these things than I am, I want you to go ahead and post that in the comment. It might be enlightening to all of us. So I'm just looking at something here that would seem to make sense for me in the USA. Okay, there are different states. Here's an Illinois. 
There's a New York. I'm going to choose this. And let's see what else I need to look at here. All right, that was all brand new information there. Scroll down further. That looks right. That looks right. That looks right. Okay, let's let's apply changes. Let's apply changes here because this is where it's going to matter right here. And let's just see if this brings my uh, Pi Star back to life. Let's see what happens. And if this takes too long, I'll just truncate it in the video when I do my editing because you can see now that my Pi Star has stopped. It's doing a reset while it takes on the new configuration. And my hope is when I power back on, we're working. Okay, it looks like we have powered back on. We're not going to ever save that. Let's go back to dashboard. Now that the hotspot's back online, let's see if we can get Parrot to work. This is KD4 BMG testing on Parrot. You getting anything? Nothing. Okay, so I'm going to consider that a fail. So, now, back to the original video that I did several months ago. <laughs> there it is, right there. Before it's too late, clone your PyStar micro SD card. So, we're going to power down. We're going to pull out our card. Set it aside. And yes, here is my case of, you know, gold. So here is my backup card that I made, all right? Power back on. And same thing here, we'll do some truncating of the video so you don't have to sit here and watch this initialize and reset. So we are reset, and with the magic of technology today, I'm going to go to a different window and show you what we have. Look at that. We're green. All that money I wasted on that cloned card just paid off. Because you saw me go in and try to correct the settings. Um, there was new information there, so I don't quite know what's wrong. But because I cloned this card months ago, in a matter of minutes, I can actually be up and operating. If I wouldn't have taken the time to go in and look at the settings, troubleshoot, because it didn't work for me on round one, so you know what I'm going to have to do now. I'm going to have to find some really smart people online that tell me what's going on, and then I'm going to have to fix it. Because I had the clone card, I'm back online. I believe we're, we're green again. So now, back to Parrot. This is KD4 BMG testing Parrot. This was KD4 BMG testing Parrot. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> See? Clone that card. All right, let's just make sure we're in good shape here and let's get over to uh, let's go over to Worldwide or yep, let's go to Worldwide because we know that we'll get some activity there pretty quick. Seem to have connected. Let's see if there's any traffic. Seriously, no traffic on Worldwide? There we go. Somebody keyed up. All right, I'll do it. This is KD4 BMG. Can someone come back and tell me that my equipment is operating okay? I had my uh, PyStar. A uh, hotspot go down recently, and I just powered back up with a new card. Want to make sure I'm transmitting okay. Charlie, nine kilo, see the light. Transmitting fine. 
Thanks for that. Appreciate it, friend. 73. There you have it. Boy, do I feel good that I wasted that $10 and created that backup micro SD card for my MMDVM hotspot because I'm back online in a matter of minutes. Do this, friend. Create yourself a backup. Clone it. I'll put the video up here with a link so you can go back and see actually how to do that. 73 friend, I hope you find this helpful.